Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing well. Now that most of us are staying at home due to the prevailing situation of COVID-19, we try to indulge ourselves in different activities to kill our time. Most people prefer binge watching their favorite shows on Netflix etc. But what happens when you are done watching the entire seasons of your favorite shows? There comes a time when you get bored of everything. So in this session today, we will bring to you the ultimate solution you need to kill your time. This solution will not only help you to kill your time, but it is also fun and will bring back your nostalgic childhood memories. So what we'll be showing you today is how you can make a retro gaming console using Raspberry Pi. So. There are several advantages to making a retro console like this. So one of them being that there is a plethora of games that you can install on the Raspberry Pi. So once we get into it, you will come to know that there are a lot of games that you can install and you can't really get enough of it. So there's no chance that you can bored with it. And moreover, this gaming console is just this is just a small size gaming console so you can easily carry it in your pocket and take it to your friend's house and play it there so so let's begin by briefly describing what the assembly is so the assembly is basically a smart lab based in n5 over the course of about six years we have successfully delivered over 250 free workshops now these workshops are categorized into three major categories code hack and data science workshops the workshops that are related to coding software projects and include apis gaming etc etc fall under the category of code workshops now the workshops that like today is that we focus on hardware like raspberry pis iot's etc come under the category of hack Lastly, all AI, AI and machine learning workshops come under the category of data science. Now our target audience is students, professionals and entrepreneurs. But anyone who is interested in our workshops is more than welcome to join. You can know more about us on our forum which is members.assembly.ae. And don't forget to connect with us on our social media. Connect to us on Facebook and YouTube and at the assembly and connect to us on Twitter and Instagram by using our handle at make smart things. So what is RetroPie? RetroPie is a software library that we'll be installing today on our Raspberry Pi. So instead of the normal Raspbian operating system, we will be installing RetroPie. So RetroPie is a software library that is used to emulate retro video games on the Raspberry Pi. It is also one of the most popular em emulation systems for the Raspberry Pi, featuring a user friendly interface and can run both on top of an existing operating system, for example, Raspbian, and boot as an operating system for a pre made SD card image. So it is possible to run it from on, on top of Raspbian, but today we will be running it, booting it directly from the SD card. So the main feature of RS RetroPie is that it includes almost all the previous experiences of console gaming emulation on Raspberry Pi. It consists of the emulation stations interface with themes for emulators, Kodi Media Player, Retroach and more than 50 systems pre-installed by default. Any Raspberry Pi version can be used to run RetroPie, but I recommend using Raspberry Pi Model 3 since it has a more powerful GPU, CPU and RAM capabilities. So this will maximize the range of games that you can play. Now for the requirements, what do we need in order to build? So the requirements are pretty simple. We just, these are the things that will be required to set up our own console. Of course, first we'll need a Raspberry Pi along with the necessary equipment. So we need an HDMI cable and the power cable to the Raspberry Pi. We need an SD card 
and most importantly today we will need a, the RetroPie software and a gaming console controller. So you can use any of the consoles controller that you have at, lying at home. You can use Y, y controller. PS4 controllers be it wired or wireless and even you can use Xbox 360 or Xbox One's controllers. So without further ado let's get going and build our own gaming console. So let's get gaming. So first of all we need to download the RetroPie software from the using the, you can download the software using the link below in the description. So once you have downloaded it you will get a zip file like this so just right click on it and unzip it so you can say extract here and then you'll get a folder like this so this is the image of the retropie that we are going to be flashing onto our sd card so i advise you to take at least 8 gb or at least minimum of 8 gb sd card with storage space so that when you install games on it it will have some space because this software itself retropie is around i think 2 to 3 GBs itself so yeah and then what you need to install is third party applications like these so SD card formatter and Bell and Asher. the link to these uh, applications is also given in the description below so you can download it from there so first you when you plug in your SD card into your computer go to SD card formatter and format the SD card however if you don't want to download this application you can manually format your SD card from your my computers option by right clicking and then choosing quick format so then just click on format leave the settings as it is just make sure you select your SD card from here so I've already formatted the SD card and put in uh, flashed in the image so I'm not going to be doing it again once you have because it takes some time to do so so once you're done with the formatting the SD card head on to Belena HR and select flash from file and then from here choose your RetroPie image and click open. So once you are done with that click on flash now that and make sure you select your SD card. So in this in our case it is our E drive so it is already selected and and then you flashed it. So but I have already flashed it so I won't be doing it again but you guys head on and do that part and now we'll just once it is done we'll remove this SD card from our computers and plug it into our Raspberry Pi and we'll get started with that. Okay so once we are done with everything so we'll plug in the SD card and I have this Xbox 360 controller and we've turned on our Raspberry Pi so as you can see it booted up in the retro Pi. So let's give it a time to boot up and you can use any of the controller. I'm using an Xbox 360 wired controller. You can use PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One or any Y controller or any, any other game pads that you have. You can use it alongside with RetroPie. So let's just give it some time to load up. Once it loads up, it will go to the emulation station screen and then it will ask us to configure our gamepad with it. So as you can see it has opened up exit emulation station and it says one gamepad is detected. So just hold on any hold a button on the device and configure it. So we'll just configure it. So it's, it recognizes that as the Microsoft 360 Xbox 360 gamepad. So just do this default configuration. So keep on pressing the buttons that you can see. So if it says D-pad right, just press the D-pad right button or whichever you want to be selected as that button. Just keep on doing that until it ends. Okay, left shoulder, right shoulder. So it might take some while to do this thing but once you've get got it set up you won't do you won't need to do it again so make sure you do it okay so we're done with it 
so we can press start so now we have a few headphones so set audio input so for audio input we'll just set it to as auto for now okay and here we are with the RetroPie console so now we can add configure Bluetooth devices and set up our Wi-Fi over here so if you want to use Wi-Fi to download ROMs we can use it from here or if you want to uh, download the ROMs or maybe transfer the ROMs using FTP or some other thing using the Wi-Fi we need to configure it so we must go in there and set it up but for the purpose of this tutorial I'll be showing you how to transfer ROMs using um, USB which is the easiest method as far as of now so you can just download ROMs on your computer and from there just copy them into your USB and we can then copy it to our RetroPie I'll show you how to do this in a bit alright so once we have set up everything on our Raspberry Pi what we need to do now in order to play games is we need to download the actual games so we need to download some ROMs so ROMs are the games that we'll be adding on to our Raspberry Pi so we need to download them from the internet so we'll go on to a website so you can go into any website you like for the ROMs but I prefer this website romhustler.org so you can just go in there and select the type of uh, emulator that you want the games for so let's say we want to select the game for Atari 7800 and let's say we want to download Mario Brothers so we can download and uh, you can download any of the games and any and every game that you want but for the purpose of this workshop I'll just show you how to download this and you can download any other ROMs the same way and it is the same way to install all those ROMs so once this download link appears you just download this and we'll then transfer it to our Raspberry Pi so you click here to get it downloaded now I've already got it downloaded and it's here on my desktop Mario Brothers originally it was a zipped file so I unzipped it and now that we have unzipped it what we need to do is we need a medium to transfer our ROMs to the Raspberry Pi so we can do it using a number of different ways you can we can do it using mm, file transfer and wifi uh, but for that we need to set up Wi-Fi and everything so it's a complex procedure but there is a way you can do that but for now we'll show you how you can transfer your ROMs using a USB which is the simplest method and it doesn't require much of any trouble so just go to this PC plug in any of your USB and first what we need to do is we need to format this USB to FAT32 format so we'll format it and make sure you select this FAT FAT32 so this is important we do this and we format the USB we click OK and we'll wait for the formatting to be finished let it takes it it takes a while so what we'll do is once the USB has been formatted we will create a folder named RetroPie inside the USB so once we have this folder and everything set up we'll safely unplug the eject the USB from our laptop and we'll plug it in into our Raspberry Pi so over there now I recommend a USB which has an LED indicator along with it however if you don't have it it's, it's it is not big deal but why I am recommending it because if you have a USB which has an LED indicator it will be much easier for the process that I am going to explain next so now that our formatting and everything has been done let's just go ahead and create a new folder we'll name it RetroPie RetroPie that's our folder there 
and we will just close this and we will safely eject our USB. Okay. So, now that we have ejected our USB and we will plug this USB into our Raspberry Pi. So, what, what I was telling you before regarding the LED USB with the LED indicator is that so you need to plug it in into the Raspberry Pi and if you have an USB with an LED indicator it will the LED will start blinking and as soon as the LED stops I mean you will get an indication that the process has been completed and you can unplug the USB safely. But now that uh, if you do not have a USB which has an LED indicator it is not a big deal you can just wait for a couple of minutes and let it complete its process and then pl unplug it. So, I think this much of a time is enough, we will unplug the USB and we will plug it back into our laptop. So, we will open it up again and as you can see the folder that we just created RetroPie has been filled in with three of these folders and as you know we did not create these folders, these folders came from RetroPie when we plugged in the USB into our Raspberry Pi. So, over here you can see the folders called ROMs and over here all the different emulators that are supported are here. So, in our case we have downloaded Mario Brothers which is Atari which comes under the category of Atari 7800 emulator. So, what we will do is we will go over to Atari 7800 folder and remember to unzip the folder first go into this folder Mario Brothers copy this file and just drag and drop or paste it into your RetroPie ROMs and Atari 7800 folder. So, once you have done that you are set up for everything now just close this and safely eject your USB. Now the steps that follow are to be done on the Raspberry Pi. So, what we will do plug this USB into our Raspberry Pi and wait for a couple of minutes. Now, this waiting time depends on the size of the ROMs that you are transferring. For instance, the ROM that I am transferring is just 100 or 200 KB. So, it will be transferred within a matter of seconds. So, let us say within 5 to 6 seconds. However, if you use a USB which has an LED indicator, you will be notified when the process is complete by the, by the stoppage of the light LED blinking. But if you do not have it, then you need to wait. So, we will just remove the USB and plug it into our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so, once we have downloaded the ROMs and installed it into our USB, we will just plug it into our Raspberry Pi. So, we will remove the USB and plug it into our Raspberry Pi and we will keep it there depending on which type of USB you have, you will need to keep it there for a couple of minutes. So, if you have an LED USB with LED indicator, you will keep it there until the LED stops blinking. So, I have already plugged in the USB into the Raspberry Pi and after a while it will transfer all the ROMs into the Raspberry Pi. So, I think it is more than enough time for it. So, I will just go ahead and remove the Raspberry Pi. And one thing to note is that you can install as many games as you want and it will not overwrite or remove the previous games that you already have in your Raspberry Pi. So, let us say for this example I have downloaded 3 to 4 games for Atari 7800 emulator, but you can install how many ever games you want depending on the size of the SD card that you have on your Raspberry Pi and whichever emulator you like. So, you can download any game that you want. And now that we have, we think the transfer is complete, we will hit start and we will restart the emulator system, emulation station but it is better to restart the entire system. So, we will just restart the entire system. So, once the system is restarted you will see that there will be games that show up on the main menu. So, instead of the place where it was only saying RAS retro pi previously you will have Atari 7800 there and other games depending on whichever ROMs you add to your Raspberry Pi. 
and once the everything is set up you are you are free to play with the games and yeah you can have fun with those games so just wait for the Pi to boot up another thing to note while tra transferring the files from USB to your Raspberry Pi is you don't have to really do anything but you have to wait depending on the amount of or the size of the ROMs like I previously said if you have uh, ROMs that are like 1 GB or 2 GB you will need to wait for let's say around 1 or 2 minutes if it is greater than that you will need to wait for that much time in order to allow the successful transfer so over here now you can see it is showing me that I have five games available in Atari 7800 so let's go ahead and see which which games are available to us so we have the Donkey Kong the Galaga Mario Brothers Pac-Man and Tank Command so let's go ahead and play Mario Brothers so it says that we have to press A to launch so we'll press A and it is it will launch the game in a few seconds it says it's launching don't press any button just wait for it to launch and here we have the game so you can see the game and we can play the game yes so it is running perfectly it was running as it would in the Atari 98 or 7800 so it really does bring back my childhood memories or probably I was I didn't play these games but I used to play Sega games or other games and those games really bring back my childhood memories and they are a good source of passing time during this situation so I think it is a very good way of uh, spending your time your, to play old games so it's good I mean okay and now we can just if you want to exit you can press the hotkey with start and it will exit the game and if you want to try another game you can go to that game and press A so let's say if we want to try Donkey Kong let's try Donkey Kong and it will take some time to load up so you saw how simple it was to create your own retro gaming console using Raspberry Pi and we must make use of things that we have and this is very important so every game will be working perfectly uh, yeah and you want to if you want to download any other roms or anything you can head on to the website which i just showed you previously romhustler.com any you can download the roms from there and then transfer it via usb or any other method that you prefer so that's it for our today's session i hope you enjoyed it i hope it will help you in killing your time <laughs> during this uh, situations and i hope you have fun and make sure you subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos and press the bell icon to be notified every time we upload a new video and also don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends so that they can also learn how simply they can make their own retro consoling gaming console thank you everyone have a nice day bye